Welcome. In this session, we will be discussing winterizations. We have sent every vendor a winterization photo checklist. On the left-hand side of this checklist is a step-by-step -step list of all pictures that are needed to properly complete a winterization. The items in red are wet and steam winterizations. Remember to go over this list every time you complete a winterization to make sure you have every picture that you need to properly complete the job. Also remember if you arrive at a property and the pipes and fixtures are frozen, please do not leave the property until you've called GCP. On the right hand side of this paper are client specs. We have many clients that we deal with, MCS, LPS, FAS, CoreLogic, MSI, and WhiteVan. All of our clients have different specifications to properly complete a winterization for them. It is imperative that you look at your work order to determine what national you are doing work for and refer back to this sheet to make sure that you properly complete that winterization. Different signs and stickers are required for each client that GCP has. Please make sure that you have the proper signs and stickers in your truck before you leave each day. The proper signs and stickers should be placed on the fixtures, water heater, electrical panel, boilers, and steam tanks, front and back door. Please refer to the client specs for the proper placement of each sign. On the back of your checklist is a series of photos. We have included these photos as a reference for what a good set of winterization photos look like. Please remember that this set only represents a partial set of pictures for a winterization. Please make sure that a picture of each toilet, sink, tub, and shower is included. There should be multiple shots of each fixture showing cleaning, antifreeze, stickers, tape, and wrap. After you have completed all of your photos for a winterization, the best practice is to take your camera, sit in your truck, and look through all your photos. Have this photo reference sheet available to make sure that you have completed all the photos properly. Please never assume that the client in GCP can look at an incomplete or partial set of pictures and think that it is done. Let's look at this MCS work order. And we're looking for the winterization line item, and here it is. I've highlighted it. And MCS reminds us that the HUD winterization season starts October 1st and ends March 31st, and it gives the listing of the states. Um, MCS wants this winterization completed on this particular work order, and they remind us to complete it with only non-toxic antifreeze and to take before and after photos of all the winterization processes. So on this particular order, you can see that we are ordered to complete a winterization and this is what it looks like for MCS. Let's look at this CoreLogic sample order here. We have a winterization. Again, perform the winterization in according with HUG guidelines. This work order doesn't tell us that the HUG guidelines are between October and March, but we need to know that because we're experienced preservation con contractors. It goes a little further and we've covered this in the winterization so far, but Toilets with hazardous material must be cleared as part of the winterizations. If the property is frozen upon arrival and there are no visible pipe breaks, you must proceed with the thaw and bid after the fact. So with this particular order in CoreLogic, if you get to a property and it's frozen, bid after the fact and thaw it. But I want you to call the office first so that we can approve the amount of money that we're talking about to complete this work. So this is an example of two different orders and one's a little bit more specific than another and they just say it in two different ways but complete the wint on both of these particular work orders. A winterization should start by finding the main shutoff valve to the water. Once you have found it, take a picture of it. Turn the shutoff valve to the off position. Take another picture. Put a zip tie on the water valve and then take a picture of the zip tie on the water valve. Removing the water meter is the next step. Please check your local and state laws before proceeding. Take a picture before you remove the water meter and after you remove the water meter and another picture of the water meter as it sits on the floor. After you remove the water meter, if there is still water dripping out of the main pipe, please call GCP immediately to get an approval to cap the lines. When capping the lines, please make sure that you use Teflon tape and that this tape is visible in your pictures. Next, find the sump pump. This is important because this is the best place to drain the water out of the boiler system and the hot water tank. Also, please verify that it is operational by either using the electric in the house or by hooking up your generator to it. 
please turn the breaker off to the hot water tank and the furnace. This is important because the heating elements can be damaged once these systems are emptied of water. Be sure to include pictures of before and after you turn the breaker off. If the power source to the water heater and the furnace is gas, please turn this off. Make sure that you get pictures of before and after. Also, please verify that the pilot light is off on both of these units. Next, you must drain the water from the water heater. Be sure to include a picture of the hose hooked up to the water heater. If this is a wet or steam winterization, be sure to include pictures of your hose hooked up to either of these units. All of the water must be fully drained from the boiler system, baseboard heaters, and radiators. Please inspect the safety valve on the radiators, but never remove them from the radiator itself. As the tanks are draining, it is important to show water coming out the end of the hose. If you are using a bucket and bringing the water upstairs, be sure to show the hose in the bucket. If you are able to place the hose in a sump pump or outside, please make sure that the picture is clear and that the water is flowing out of the hose. Please take pictures of your equipment on the job site. In this set of pictures, we can see the air compressor, the generator, hoses, cords, and pressure gauges. These pictures are required in your full set of pictures for a winterization. Please make sure you have the proper equipment for this job. Your air compressor should easily be able to blow all the water out of the lines in a short amount of time. When the air compressor is hooked up to the pressure gauge, please show the pressure gauge hooked up to your hoses. With the pressure gauge hooked up to the water lines, you are blowing compressed air to remove all water from the lines. Go around the house and open up all of the fixtures so that the air can blow all the water out of the lines. It will take a few minutes to blow all of the water out of the lines. While you are waiting for this to happen, go around the house and take pictures of each fixture showing the water and air being blown out of the fixture. Once all of the water has been blown out of the lines, go around the house and begin to close all the fixtures. Once this is complete, go back to your pressure gauge. You are looking to bring the pressure up to 35 pounds of pressure and verify if the system will hold this amount of pressure. If the system holds 35 pounds of pressure, take a clear picture of the dial showing 35 pounds of pressure. Note that LPS requires a dial like in the picture on the bottom left to be hooked up to no hoses. You will need to acquire this dial and make sure you have it on hand for all LPS jobs. If the system will not hold pressure, you will need to supply a bid and a reason as to why. Next, the toilets must be cleaned. We understand that hard water stains and these types of things are very difficult to remove and you are not required to remove these. This is a matter of removing debris and feces and other items from the toilet. Next, completely remove the water from the toilet bowl and the toilet tank. These must be completely empty of water before adding antifreeze. This contractor is using an inexpensive siphon kit with a little bulb to remove the water. It's a very fast, safe, and clean way to remove the water from both the bowl and the tank. Next, pour antifreeze down the sinks, tubs, showers, toilets, and dishwashers. Some clients require that we pour it down the washer drain as well. Action shots are required while pouring antifreeze. If we are missing action shots of antifreeze being poured into fixtures, the winterization is considered incomplete. The after shot of the toilet must show a clear pink liquid in the bottom of the toilet. Please do not pour antifreeze in a toilet that still has water in it because the antifreeze will show as a more clear liquid than a pink liquid. Our clients are looking for a solid pink liquid to be in the bottom of each toilet. Please make sure that non-toxic pink RV antifreeze is used. Do not use anything but this type of antifreeze. Do not use the green car antifreeze and do not dilute this pink antifreeze with water to make it go further. We can tell from pictures when this antifreeze has been diluted. After pouring the antifreeze, 
check your client specifications to see if winterization tape, blue tape, or wraps are required in each fixture. Please make sure that you check your client specs to see which signs or stickers are required. Please make sure that you use the correct one. Using the incorrect one will be considered an incomplete job. Also make sure that these stickers or signs are completely filled out. A picture of these signs or stickers is required on all electrical panels, water heaters, furnaces, boilers, or steam units. Apply a sign or sticker to the front door. Then stand back and take a wide angle picture of the door so that we can see the sign or sticker. Also, take a close up picture of the sign or sticker so that we can see the writing and the date clearly in the picture. If there is a back door to the house, be sure to include a picture of the signage on that door as well. GCP requires a good picture of the electric meter. Please make sure that we can read the meter and the serial number. MCS specs. Printed signage on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. Zip tie the water main. Use blue painter's tape over the toilets, sinks, and tubs in an X pattern. No antifreeze showing on the floor of the showers and tubs. What this means is in your pictures, we should not see standing antifreeze on the bottom of the shower and the tub. Make sure it all goes down the drain. Partial winds are okay. Be sure to bid all damages. LPS specs. Use only LPS blue wind stickers on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. It is important that you use only the stock LPS blue wind sticker. Standalone pressure gauge is required. Please see the pictures to make sure that you are using the correct gauge. Partial winds are okay, but bid all damages. Zip tie the water main. FAS specs. Printed signage on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. Zip tie the water main. Shrink wrap all toilets. And partial winds are okay. Be sure to bid all damages. CoreLogic specs. Printed signage on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. Use blue painter's tape over the toilets, sinks, and tubs in an X pattern. Be sure to pour antifreeze down the washer drain line. No partial winterizations. If you see obvious damage while preparing for the wind, bid the damage in the wind and do not complete a partial winterization. If you complete the winterization and it will not hold pressure, this is okay. Do your best to find the damage or leak and bid. MSI specs. Printed signage on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. Zip tie the water main. Use blue painter's tape over the toilets, sinks, and tubs in an X pattern. Shrink wrap all toilets. No antifreeze showing on the floor of the tubs and showers. Partial winds are okay. Be sure to bid all damages. White van specs. Printed signage on all fixtures, doors, water heaters, electrical panels, furnaces, and boilers. Zip tie the water main. Use blue painter's tape over the toilets, sinks, and tubs in an X pattern. Partial winds are okay. Be sure to bid all damages. On your photo checklist is a GCP contact list. Please make sure you refer to this when calling into the office with questions concerning your winterizations. Thank you.